Stanley Cup celebrations beat a Super Bowl any day. Kirsten and I explain why. Plus, Morgan Riley, Brock Faber, and more of your questions all on this week's episode. Created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Talk North, Jim Beam, Livia, Grain Belt, and Royal Credit Union. This is Season 5, Episode 215. New drop alert! The Minnesota Wilds celebrate and honor Marc-Andre Fleury's 1,000th game, and you can get in on the memorabilia action with an all-new exclusive Soda Stick and Hockey Lodge t-shirt and hat drop. Grab your piece of history with a one-of-a-kind hat or tee that commemorates one of the greatest tendies in Wild and NHL history. Don't miss out on this fantastic collaboration between Soda Stick and the Hockey Lodge. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition. Like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart, Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company Incorporated, Fairmont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. What's up? Bar Down Beauties, episode 215. I'm Jesse Pierce. She's Kirsten Kroll. We're hockey people. That's all you need to know about us. Welcome back to another edition of Bar Down Beauties. My, while we might be hockey people, Kirsten, we're sports people. So I know you watched the Super Bowl yesterday because you had other um, <clears throat> collaborations happening with, obviously, your girl T. Swift being very heavily involved with Kansas City Chiefs. How happy are you this morning that Taylor's boyfriend pulled it off? Uh, what did you think of the Super Bowl as a whole? And I will bring it into hockey, guys. So stay tuned. We will bring it back to hockey, but I want to, you know, catch up. How was it for you? People are already getting so mad that we're talking Super Bowl right now. <laughs> and you know what? I don't care. I don't care. I, you know, we're we're changing it up a little bit for this Monday morning, which, by the way, day after the Super Bowl should be a national holiday. Just throwing that out there. Um, you know, I'm happy for Trav. I'm going to be completely honest. I don't like the Kansas City Chiefs. I did not want the Kansas City Chiefs to win to the surprise of a lot of people because I think they just assumed. Um, happy for my girl T Swift. Um, but, you know, I feel very sad for my boy George Kittle this morning mm. as well. Um, I was rooting for the 49ers. But overall, still a really fun time watching the game. It was pretty quiet up until the last few minutes of that fourth quarter but you know i still had fun it was all about the food anyways it usually is like we had some good wings going um i didn't really care for either i obviously went to iowa state so brock purdy my boy there having met george kittle same time you did back into beauty league appearance there was that so i guess 49ers i would have liked plus it just it's always Casey. I just am kind of done with that, I'm right? I'm so done with that over it. I'm yeah. so over it. Like there was a, a little headline on Sports Center or something that said, if the Chiefs win the Super Bowl, is Patrick Mahomes immortal? And I was like, literally shut <laughs> up. Like, I was so annoyed. I'm so annoyed of hearing about Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, and but right. I would take him as the quarterback of the Minnesota Vikings. So there's that. Like I'd be pretty happy about that. I mean, they'd yeah, win the Super Bowl but... their first year. That's never going to happen. So I'm pretty, I'm just, I'm, I'm a little bitter this morning. Well, as we'd mentioned, I will bring this into hockey. So the one thing that I really don't like about the Super Bowl celebrations and yes, football, obviously completely different situation than hockey, just from this regular season schedule, yada, yada, the amount of players, all of that. I get that, but I hate how in football, particularly, they really emphasize their MVP or their one player or their two star players or the owners, the owners getting the Lombardi trophy before the team on the field is just absolutely ridiculous. Like that's the one thing that they should look at the NHL for and be like, Hey, this is how they do it. Right. I mean, what other things do you think Kirsten, the NFL could learn from hockey just as mostly in that team first mentality, because I think that's completely lost in the NFL among other sports, but it just, that really frustrates me for some reason. Yeah, I think that is a very good discussion, and I have a few different thoughts. So I know there was a conversation circling when I was even looking at Twitter online this morning, or X, whatever you want to call it. I'm always going to call it Twitter, um, about how somebody was saying how they just hate how kind of orchestrated the post game is with the NFL. Yeah. And I get it. Like, it's a game built for tv like you're Mm -hmm. stuck to a schedule so they said they didn't really like how immediately the team doesn't get to celebrate with each other right after um take that as you will but yeah i agree with you the emphasis on the mvp so it was patrick mahomes again to be quite honest 
I personally, this has nothing to do with Taylor Swift either. Just <laughs> I feel Travis Kelsey made a stronger case for MVP than Patrick Mahomes did. I don't know. I just feel football definitely puts the emphasis, like you said, on MVP specifically towards the quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. And it should be a, those first few minutes, especially should be very team focused. I hate how also in the NFL for the Super Bowl, they bring up like four or five players to just have on the stage. Where's the rest of the team? Like one yes. person does not win a game. It is an entire team. It's an 82 man roster. Mm -hmm. Like where's everybody else and yes i do hate too that they give the trophy to the owners give the trophy to the players on the field let them have like a few minutes to really just soak it in i don't know it's just very orchestrated very i don't want to say like self-centered with certain players yeah but like they do put the focus on superstars when like you got so many men out there who just helped win that game well, it's a very it, NFL has always felt very individualized team sport. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So I think that I don't think it was always that way. I truly feel as like social media has grown, individual brand deals have really come to life because of social media. I feel we've just seen it get worse and worse. The individualism part mm -hmm. of sports and the contracts do not even get me started on like how every single player when they resign need to be the highest paid player ever. Like there's just so many rants I could go on and I just, I, yeah, I feel like it's gotten worse as the years have gone on. That's why we like hockey. Yeah. I mean, frankly, that's why we like hockey. What did you think of the Usher performance and Luda? Who would be your pick to, to do it for if the NHL were to do something like that? Again, as you'd mentioned, the Super Bowl very made for TV. This is what it is. It's the NFL, all of that. But let's say the NHL decided to get in on this. Let's say they had the game seven, of the Stanley Cup Finals, and you know what? We're gonna go all out. We're gonna make it like a Super Bowl. Who is your intermission performer, and uh, would you consider Usher, Luda, maybe? Sorry, I feel like a sneeze is coming on. That is the sneeze <laughs> that also is never gonna come. So, if I sneeze while talking, sorry about it. I liked Usher's performance. I thought it was good. I don't think it was anything life changing. I feel mm -hmm. like I've seen better Super Bowl performances, but it was good. I'm not gonna complain about it. Um, <clears throat> I personally wouldn't pick him to do an NHL halftime no. show. I was a little surprised they even had him for an NFL halftime show. I was kind of like, what? Like when I heard that announced, it was a little underwhelming, but he did a good job. I enjoyed it. Um, and as far as who I would do for an NHL halftime show, duh, no question. Taylor Swift. Oh, boy. See, but like, so what I say the same thing for Usher, aside from like, I like, yeah, and you know, some, but some of his songs, they're just so sultry and they're so soulful. And I'm like, that's not getting me amped during a game. And Taylor Swift, no offense, ain't getting me amped for game seven of the Stanley Cup finals. You've never heard reputation then. No, I told you I, I'm new. I'm like a, I'm a, I'm a quarter Swifty, maybe an eighth. Then your opinion doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> but I just like, I would like, I don't know. I don't know who I would pick either. I would pick a rock, which is probably very cliche. I would Let's maybe pick Nickelback. Nickelback. I do like me some Nickelback. I could go Nickelback. Let me know who you guys would pick for your Game 7 Stanley Cup final playoff uh, intermission performance because that could be kind of fun. Um, let's switch gears, obviously, fully into the NHL. Morgan Riley of the Toronto Maple Leafs goes and cross-checks a dude after he slap shots a goal into the empty net. And yes, I'd be embarrassed if I were Morgan Riley and the Toronto Maple Leafs for losing to the Ottawa Senators, who are not a very good team at all. Agree or disagree with Riley's actions? Which, by the way, is um, giving him an in-person hearing. Uh, haven't seen that. We're recording this at 11.20 a.m. on Monday, so I haven't seen the outcome of that. He will be suspended, obviously, just for how long. But did you like the way that he's, you know, stuck up for his team? It was kind of like, hey, we don't do that. You don't need to embarrass us more. Were you like, dude, come on now? It's just kind of like, dude, come on. It's just so unnecessary. I don't <laughs> yeah. like it. I wouldn't have had a problem if he had just, like, gone after him a little bit, maybe roughed him up. But, like, the whole stick to the head thing, maybe don't do that. Well, yeah. And uh, we talked, too, about regardless of what team uh, – or, you know, just regardless of the situation, no one in the NHL likes to see those head contact injuries. That's just yeah. so uncalled for, especially when it like seems when it's so unnecessary. Like sometimes we get it like accidents happen and it, just things happen out on the ice. But it's just like that was just such a moment that it's like you don't need to do that. 
Yeah, I would agree. And, you know, but do you agree with Ridley Grieg's slap shot into the empty net? Now, how do you feel about him doing that? Where it is, it's kind of a, a smash in your face. I personally love it. I think it's I like great. that better than <laughs> taking a check to the head. Yeah. Like, I think I, I get Morgan Riley's reaction a little bit. Again, I disagree with the stick. And we've talked about that in any other injury. Like, you use a stick as a weapon, Ryan Hartman. I don't care for that move mm-hmm. i but i like the intention i like kind of that f you mentality from both I was, sides I was about of it. to say that same exact thing like right a little f you chirping like yeah rough yeah. each other up but like we don't need to be causing unnecessary injuries here no but i mean i don't know i like the little bit of arrogance if you will in the game here and yeah. there you gotta bring it sometimes usually Absolutely. those guys can back it up like have it it's a little fun uh, you know, what's not so fun is the Minnesota Wild schedule coming up. We will obviously get to our wild week ahead in the next segment. But Kirsten, currently your Minnesota Wild, they finally reach 500 uh, with 31 games left. They're at Vegas tonight on Monday. Seven bo- points behind St. Louis, who's at 58 for that second wild card in the West. They did surpass Arizona. They're one point ahead of Arizona. So there's now four teams that are worse than your Minnesota Wild in the West. Uh, still between them, Nashville has 56 points, Calgary has 55, and Seattle has 52. How are you feeling about the Minnesota Wild squad, which is 30 game, 31 games left, excuse me, in the regular season? Seven points feels like a lot to me. Again, all things considered, because St. Louis is still going to play. They're still going to do their thing. And then with those other teams in the mix ahead of them, I just I main, remain steadfast on like, you know, this ain't the year. It's not the playoff year. I mean, I agree with you, too. I in uh, Tracking back to what we said, even at the start of the season, we said, like, they'll be a bubble team at best, mm-hmm. and they're not far behind that. I still think it's too early to count them out altogether. I could still see them squeaking their way in because, yes, if the Wild continue to play like they have, where it's just like, what are we doing out here? Seven points is a lot, and they're going to continue to dig themselves in a hole where they're going to get even further back. But in the same regards, seven points – isn't that much like they could still dig themselves out. Um, I don't know. I just, I'm not going to get my hopes up that they're going to make it. And I really am not expecting anything, but I just still think there's a chance. Mm -hmm. How chaotic do you think Vegas was for the Minnesota wild players last night? They got into town in the afternoon, obviously Super Bowl being held in Vegas. So look at how we did that full circle, baby full Mm -hmm. circle, Uh, a game tonight. I imagine that took a lot of restraint by a lot of uh, players to kind of keep it together and not uh, be be tempted to to go out and get a little wild and crazy. I'm sure there were conversations had (laughs) before then, but at the same time, I don't think all of them were just hanging out in their hotel room, not doing anything at all, especially because they got there like what, right before kickoff, like late afternoon. Mm -hmm. So they weren't just hanging out in their hotel room, especially when the game's later tonight. So I'm sure they, and this is speculation. I have no idea. So I'm not trying to (laughs) be like, oh yeah, they went and got crazy. I have no idea. I just, if it were me, I wouldn't be, especially when the Super Bowl is going on, you're not going to see me sitting by myself in my hotel room all night. Like I'll be responsible, but I'm going to go out and like, I don't know, maybe find a slot machine or something find a slot machine <laughs> that's, just, that's your woo we're gonna go find a i don't slot gamble machine. so for me it's like wow i don't really either like, <laughs> yeah i don't i i can put 20 40 bucks in but that's probably about it like that even like from pull tabs to anything like i'm not a I'm not a put in big win big type of person no. i just i don't care enough no, I get mad if I lose twenty dollars. Yeah. Well, and I like the slot games or like the machines that it's like a game, right? Where you have to like pick the right thing and like you get to the bonus and you get these other games, like then it's kind of fun. Then it's like I'm playing a video game with potential to win money. Yeah. And I'm surprisingly like good at slots. I know you can't be good. It's luck of can't the draw. Be good at slots. But I think I have like the lucky touch when it comes to slots. My parents always taught or my dad rather, so my dad's side is kind of big gamblers like not to like where we need to call 1-800 gambling or anything like that but like they certainly love their casino trips or whatever my aunt maybe she's a little borderline but they they're irish too so they click you click your heels and like we do all these weird little superstitions when we're at the casino because we all go together as a family uh every once in a while and we all like put money in in the same machine sometimes my dad mm-hmm. one time got so mad i was like here's your 20 bucks back after i won like 200 bucks he's oh. like some of that's mine i'm like no it's not you didn't play with me i just i won so then oh, he tried to steal me. my machine 
JP just always. But you can't do that. You can't steal the machine because I know it's their rules. Like once you win a little bit, like it's not going to let you keep winning. Or gambling, there's gambling etiquette, if you but will. You just you got to learn when it's time to walk away from the you machine. Gotta, you not know, you got to know when to hold them and when to fold them. It went to walk away. You don't yeah. know that song. No, do you? I was like, I was singing it to myself in my set <laughs> head. No when to hold them. No when no to fold them. No when to walk away. away. No, no when to run. run. Yeah, I Shout know out. the song. Shout I out just... Kenny Rogers. What a what a wow. gem. R.I.P. Uh, we're gonna take on that note, on that beautiful <laughs> musical note, we're gonna take a quick break. We come back. We got more of your questions. We're going to give some more love to Brock Faber, as well as take a look at the Wilds week ahead. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Jesse Pierce here. Now is the time to choose you and get healthier the Livia way. When you join Livia, you'll receive a personalized and doctor recommended program tailored to your unique goals and lifestyle. Join Livia today and you'll get the first three months absolutely free. As a Livia ambassador, one-on-one support was key in me hitting my goal weight. I am still down over 30 pounds. Keep trucking toward that end goal. I can see it in sight. I couldn't be any closer uh, if it weren't for the help of my one-on-one support at the Woodbury Clinic. Join Livia today and get your first three months absolutely free. Visit Livia.com or call 855-GO-LIVIA. Breakthrough medical weight loss options now also available. What's up? We're back. I want to talk about Brock Faber. Now, I know we've talked about him at length numerous times. He's been a guest on this very podcast a couple of times. Still one of my favorite podcast moments when he gave you that look as you were asking him about Taylor Swift. He's like, yeah, no, she's great. I I think he thinks I'm crazy, but also at the same time, like (laughs) I have seen based on his ballet sports interviews with Kevin Gorg, he just makes expressions. He's very expressive. It is. I still think he thinks I'm crazy. And honestly, I own that. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Again, we've talked about how he surpassed all our expectations. But the thing I'm really noticing, and it's so funny. So when the whole Brock Faber for Calder started, you know, happening and the conversations are happening, it felt very Minnesota, right? Like, of course, mm-hmm. we're going to want one of our own. And of course, especially a Maple Grove, one of our own. I get that. I didn't, I wasn't fully on. I wasn't fully on board with that. I was like, ah, I don't think there's really a chance. I am in. I am a hundred percent in as I am watching national or teams come and other national emphasis. I mean, you saw TNT do a whole segment on Brock Faber. He's starting to gain that recognition league wide, not just in the caller Kirsten. He has 31 points, which is obviously second among ro- rookies still trailing Connor Bedard. He is first in assists with 27. He is top 20 among all defensemen uh, ranking 19th. When it comes to points, he is 14th in the league in assists 11th in total ice time. Um, I, I'm in, I, I be think it'd be silly for him to not win at this point. He is an impact player. The Minnesota wild would be way worse off if Brock Faber was not a part of this team. He is a rookie that is doing things that are not rookie. Like, you know, again, getting the special teams nods, doing things that a 21, 22 year old shouldn't be doing at this level, shutting down the top offensive players on op- opposing teams. He is a top line defenseman. And I think he would have earned that position even if Jared Spurgeon were back in the picture too, you know what I mean? I think that changes the conversation, but I think he's got to not to mention Connor Bedard just isn't going to have the number of games that he needs to warrant that. He's only got 39 games under his belt. I know he'll be coming back soon, but I'm all in Brock for Calder. Let's go. Let's make it happen. Agreed a thousand percent. I have a number of thoughts surrounding this. Just even looking at his point totals for this season as a defenseman, yeah. like Uh, just it's crazy when you think about it and then also I think it's absolutely ridiculous when it got to the halfway point in the season and you're talking about who uh, is in the conversation for the Calder Brock Faber was I remember Russo tweeting something and I'm not going to quote it exact but like basically the chart he showed showed that Faber was out of consideration basically at that point in Mm -hmm. the season around the halfway mark. But at this point, there's absolutely no reason he should not be a finalist, if not win it all. I think one of the even more impressive things that we've seen with Brock Faber, the amount of ice time he's had, his ability to remain healthy, knock on wood all Mm -hmm. throughout this season, going from playing the college game, rookie season in the NHL, playing the minutes he has, that is arguably the most impressive thing that I have seen. You look at other people who are in consideration for the Calder, Connor Bedard, and granted injuries 
can't really control that at all. Connor Bedard injured, Adam Fantilli injured, but Brock Faber, he's been with it all season long. So that's just one of the things too, that I think is standing out to me at this moment. Well, and it doesn't always have to be, yes, I understand that the NHL wants Connor Bedard to be this next face. Connor McDavid didn't win the Calder his year. Sidney Crosby didn't win the Calder his year. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be that guy. You go back, the last defenseman to win was Moritz Cedar of Detroit in 21-22. He beat out Trevor Zegers and Michael Bunnington from Toronto. Then you've got Cam Lacar in 2019 and 20. Um, and I think Brock Faber's right there with those guys, right? Again, as I'd mentioned, those numbers where he's ranking amongst all league defensemen are big numbers. Like that's mm -hmm. huge. And it's just, it's incredible. So yes, I'll admit I was probably late to the Brock for Calder train. I think a lot think, of people were though, not just yeah. you, a lot of people were, I just, I, I thought it would be really hard, right? Like I did mm -hmm. even with Bedard getting hurt and the fact that his numbers are still standing. It's impressive. And Connor Bedard is a one hell of a player. He is an impressive player to watch. Um, it sucks that he's on a sucky team it, with Chicago right now too, right? Because I think that would also make a difference. He's doing what he can. He's still a minus 22 because that's how often the Chicago Blackhawks are mm -hmm. getting scored on too. But that's just, I think what Brock is doing is at another level. And like I'd mentioned that national recognition just the other day, the opposing uh, media wants to interview Brock. It's all about Brock. Mm -hmm. It's Brock. It's Brock. It's Brock, which means good things for him. Right. I mean, he mm -hmm. deserves that. He's so well-spoken. He's such a good, good person. Um, and he's an incredible, incredible hockey player. So I think it's his to lose if anything. Um, and then a little side shout out to Marco Rossi. He's still mm -hmm. paving his own way. It's kind of funny. We were laughing in the press box the other day about that. Like now that Brock has stepped in and done all these things, We've kind of forgotten about Marco. Marco's still doing really, really well. He's still doing some incredible things, even when he's getting maybe buried on the third line or he's, you know, getting kind of moved around. Um, Marco Rossi is still having a really good season. He's still up in the conversation for Calder as well as, as he should be, I think. I don't think his chances are quite as high as maybe they were a month or two ago. But for Brock, Agreed. we stand. Put the campaign together. Absolutely. Agreed. Everything you said about Marco Rossi. Love me some Rossi. But also, too, just going back to Brock Faber a little bit, like comparing him to like Connor Bedard in a way is like comparing apples to oranges, like mm -hmm. obviously forward defenseman, but just everything we've said about Brock Faber, it just stands out even more like Connor Bedard. You kind of expect everything that he's done with all of the hype that's been surrounding him deservedly so. But Brock Faber has just really come out of I don't want to say nowhere because we saw glimpses of a lot of promise from him even when he joined the team in the postseason last year but he's just continued to build on it at such an impressive pace and I just think being the defensive player he is that just adds a little bit more too when you take into consideration the numbers from other defensemen currently around the league and mm -hmm. defensemen who have had the season he has had how long it's been he's just so poised like he's just a poised individual right like and that's the thing like I don't think he would be phased by it, you know, not in a bad way, but just in similar to when Kirill Kaprizov won it. How incredible mm -hmm. would that be for the Minnesota Wild organization to all of a sudden have two Calder trophy winners? It'd be huge. It'd be insane. I can't even picture that. Like my mind just can't comprehend that. I just, it'll be absolute highway robbery in my opinion, if Brock Faber does not win it. Right. So like he deserves it. And not even that he wants it. I don't think it's really something he's focused on. And I'm not even just saying that because that's the cliche hockey mm -hmm. players give you. But that man has freaking earned it this season. Yeah. Yeah. hundred uh, percent. Wild week ahead, Kirsten. Obviously, they're in Vegas tonight. Uh, we had already made our predictions. You said they would lose. I said they would win because I'm, I don't know. Yeah, the look uh, I gave you when you <laughs> said that, I still, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's... Oh, it needs to happen. Uh, they have Arizona. They're at Arizona on Wednesday. Then they come back for Buffalo on Saturday, Vancouver on Monday, and then they're up in Winnipeg next Tuesday. I'm going to forget the Winnipeg game. We can cover that in next week's episode. I'm just really kind of excited for the Winnipeg game just to see what happens. Uh, but two really big Western Conference opponents with Arizona and Vancouver. Vancouver obviously still um, doing some amazing things. Arizona, as I'd mentioned, now one point behind your Minnesota Wild for whatever bottom rung lead they're at what do you think they're gonna go they're gonna go two and one they're gonna get the win against Arizona especially just I think Arizona left a very bad taste in the wild's mouth when they got absolutely embarrassed in front of the home crowd six mm -hmm. six rip 
Um, I, that's not going to happen again. I think they're definitely no doubt about it. Getting the win against Arizona. Buffalo is perpetually cursed. They're going to get the win against Buffalo as well. Vancouver is going to be really tough. Okay. That's so fair. two and one. I'm going to go. I'm going to go two and one, but I'm going to say they're going to lose to Arizona and then they're going to beat Buffalo and Vancouver. You literally are uh, home. home. It's team. okay to agree with me. It's okay. <laughs> no, I could just see, I mean, depending on how tonight goes, I could see things falling apart in Arizona again, not to the level that it did the last go round. Um, and then I could see them getting up for Vancouver next Monday, knowing, you know, how important that one is too. Mm -hmm. I just, sometimes just they, like I, they are it, against Vegas tonight. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Exactly. <laughs> just all right. I want to see them win more than they lose. Mostly those Buffalo and Vancouver games are at home too. So I, I am so sick of writing the losing story about the, the home team. So let's do that. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Let us know what you guys think the Minnesota Wild are going to do this week. Uh, Kirsten, before we dive into more of our questions that we actually didn't get to last week, what was your favorite hockey moment of the week? The same as everybody else. Mark andre Fleury night. How could it not be? Mm -hmm. Just the pregame ceremony, just watching fans too. And I'm going to put them on blast for a sec. My co-host was getting emotional, like literally had tears in his eyes, more so because he has a daughter who is a year old. And just seeing how Marc Andre Fleury's kids just praised him in the tribute video, saying, I always say, like, your tie that you wear is lucky, but it's actually you that's the magic. And just kind of how caught off guard he was by that, how well spoken and poised his kids were. Yes. Um, I was blown away by that alone. But it was it was emotional. It was emotional seeing Fleury get emotional, but also how often is it? You get to witness a player do everything in, right in person that Marc Andre Fleury is doing, but to also witness a player who is so well respected and loved by opposing fans, fans across the league, everywhere. From even the most, I'm trying to think of the word, the most intense fan bases around just adore the guy. You don't mm -hmm. see that. So to be able to be witness to that evening is something I'm never going to forget. Yeah, I mean, I think we reminded everybody very early on that you, you're witnessing history being made with Marc-Andre Fleury and, and just the person that he is. It can't be reiterated and stated enough. Like, he is such a good dude. And it looks, it mm -hmm. seems like his whole family is, right? I mean, Absolutely. his kids, like you said, I was shocked at how unnervous they were and how well spoken they were not only from the locker room lineup card but to their video tribute and then even doing the let's play hockey mm -hmm. call um you know and, and it's so funny because mark andre had said post game too he's like yeah i'm softer i'm much softer now that i got kids i can't do that and even pat maroon big old pat maroon i caught him in the locker room saying his congrats to uh to flurry and even he said he was tearing up watching the kids because he's got kids of his own and I mean, it's just, it was a very special moment. I think the Minnesota Wild did a tremendous job, great job in waiting for that Pittsburgh game too, knowing his connection with the the Penguins and the players too. Um, wish the Minnesota Wild could have come out a little bit better to start the game, but I also love that the storyline concluded with Marc-Andre Fleury getting the victory for Minnesota. Let's even just take a sec to talk about those last two minutes of yeah. that game. Marc-Andre Fleury playing absolutely out of his mind. And I loved the quote from Duhame. Shout out to you, Jesse, because I think I read it on your Twitter to where Duhame was quoted saying he would have, or oh, Boldy no, so saying Boldy. that. Boldy mm -hmm. saying it about Duhame, how he would have just taken a puck to the face if he needed to <laughs> in order to block a shot for Flurry to get that win. Just in that, again, that goes to speak to how much even his teammates adore him. Like, no surprise there, but just incredible. That was it. So, Technically, yes, my favorite hockey moment. My second favorite hockey moment was playing in the Dynamites Winter Classic 3 on 3 with Goons for Good, raising money. Thank you to everybody who contributed um, for that. That was so much fun. I have never played hockey in a competitive setting, like an actual competitive setting. So that was interesting. I hurt. My entire body hurts. I thought I pulled, tore my ACL. I have no idea what I did. It's swollen. I know. It's just a reminder as I texted you, Kirsten. It's a reminder that I am old and unathletic. But I went out there and did the damn thing. I am very proud of myself for playing in all three, all four games. I was a forward in three games and I was a goaltender in the final game for the toilet bowl because my team didn't do very well. 
Um, there were only six people to a team for this three on three. It was a lot of hockey, but it was a lot of fun. Couldn't be more grateful for Soda Stick and Goons for Good for putting it on and obviously Dynamites. But then the players that were out there too, like they were super supportive of me. A lot of them were like, Jesse, just go to the net and we'll pass it to you and score. And I did. Um, and then anybody who tried to score on me when I was a goalie would get booed because people thought that was rude. I mean, all in all, it was, it was, it was great. It was a really fun fun time um, i think next year when i go i'm just gonna make a sign for you that's fair <laughs> you could do that be witness you should try it though it was good it was a good time i think i will try it i don't want i don't think i want to do all of the games because i yeah. do like i said i just want to have a sign and watch you but i definitely will lay some up for one I was as cruise. a defenseman i want to be defenseman i was cruising around and that's what's funny my dad was like jess just stay back and play defense and i was like well no, I'm, I'm trying. He's like, well, you can't play offense. And I was like, dad, like just chirping me on the sidelines. He had, uh, someone has to hold you accountable. I mean, it's true. I was just buzzing around out there. My biggest, my only concern, it was less of like hurting myself. I didn't want to get in the way because some of the, like, so the great thing about goons for good, if you're not non-familiar, um, they put on these charity tournaments in different settings and different for different foundations and different events for even youth hockey associations. There'll be a nice story about it coming up in the next issue of MHJ. Um, but they have all levels of people that have played. Like I met one guy who had just moved here from West Virginia and decided this is how he was going to learn to play. He's like, you know, I, I know hockey's big here. I've never played hockey before, so I'm going to give it a go. And and he did. And you've got players who have played collegiately in high school, but it's fun. Cause when you're out there, nobody makes you feel bad about it. Like there are certain elements of competitiveness. Obviously we all have, even me, even when I'm not good, I, I want to win. Um, but that was my worry is I didn't want to get in the way of people that were actually like good at, at playing. So that was my only slight concern where I was like, guys, I could, I could sit this one out here. You know, I don't need to, to get in on the next shift. So, but it was proud great. of you. Thank you. I was pretty proud of myself. I was like, look at me. I've never even put hockey gear on. And I wore um shout out to Jesse who puts on goons for good, but he was the one that let me put his goalie pads on. And they were still a little wet from his adult Ugh. league. Yeah, it was it was an all around experience. But my goodness, it was fun. So again, thank you to all of you. So that was my favorite hockey moment of the week. Let me know what your guys were. Let's dive into some questions to wrap up this week's episode. Uh, first one coming to us from Jason J. What is the thing you most love about hockey and being around the game and why? It, it's the people. It's hands down the people. And it sounds so cliche, but it's like, for me, there would be no point in working in sports. Like, yeah, they're fun. But if you don't enjoy the people that you're around, like the fans for one are what make it so worthwhile. The stories, the tributes and trials players go through, like it's so inspiring. Just everyone you get to meet along the way. There's so many amazing people, like truly some of the best people I've ever met have been people I've met through sports. So for me, that is truly what it is. Yeah. Without question. Cause they, I guess to, you know, emphasize on that or to add on to that. Cause there's, I love the people at every single level. Like that's where I've been so fortunate. I love this job because I love telling those stories, you know, whether mm -hmm. it is about the fan or the grandma or the kid who's, you know, wanted to do this, that I, it's just amazing. It's not just the pro level. It's every single level for me is the people um, are just so amazing and so humble. And you don't, build them like hockey families and hockey players too often but i think it's also the atmosphere of hockey right like Thousand you need percent. to watch a hockey game in person to really understand the passion and the love like it is unlike anything else live like i've been to nfl games i've been to nba games right an nhl hockey game in person is just so unique even a pwhl game i will put them up there in the same category like you just get this build up and this hype and that sports in general but i don't know there's an atmosphere that hockey creates um, that I really, really love. And I think that's gotta be my favorite thing. Yeah, no, I completely, I, I agree. Do you want me to ask the next question? Yeah. Like, you, now that I actually have a computer in front of me, <laughs> exactly. not in a little room, I have a mic stand. So I'm not like moving the camera everywhere with my arm. Hey, you did the best with one. the situation you were in last week. I'm proud of you. And the bruise on my thigh, for anyone wondering, is still very prominent and mm. very sore. But honestly, I'm really happy it happened to me <laughs> Yeah, getting hit by a puck because I was just telling everyone, I was like, I feel like a badass now. <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah, like, hit me again. Like, let's do it again. Again, why I would just be an amazing defenseman. Um, okay, <laughs> next question. 
How many more losses again? Oh, I should preface from Adam C. How many more losses before the office accepts the season is over? A lot of fans have, but the wild aren't mathematically that far behind. So could they keep pushing up to the trade deadline? I love this question. Um, I don't know. Cause I want so badly for it to be done. Right. Like I just kind of want that admission of, of uh, being done out there already. But I think they could because you're right. I mean, you said it, too, in our earlier segment. Seven points isn't that much like they're not out of it. And mathematically, they're not out of it. Um, I think if you have any other losing streak that extends beyond two games, though, it's got to be hard for you to look at yourselves in the mirror and be like, yep, we can still do this. Like, no. So if you have if you start a losing streak of more than two games, then it's done. We're done. And that between now and the deadline and figure it out. That makes sense. Also, too, at that point, like you are almost relying on other teams losing so you can climb your way out yes so it's more than just winning games at that point you need other teams to lose I don't think that they're going to admit it um I think I think it'll really take like a definite once teams have clinched and it just really is looking numbers wise it's just not going to happen I think that's when it'll be admitted. But I don't mm-hmm. think otherwise, just knowing the winning mentality Bill Guerin has, the winning mentality I like to think players on our team have, I don't think they're going to admit it. No, I don't think so either. And again, I understand that to a point. It just drives me insane, right? Like, I just, I can't, like, no, just say it. Just say we're done. You know, it's almost like a bad breakup, right? Like I know we're done, you know, we're done, but you want to spare my feelings and pretend it's all roses. It's like, no, just say, this isn't, it's not working. It's fine. Well, we can move on then. Yeah. I get that. For the record, I don't get broken up with. I always did the breaking up. I, yeah, that's Flex. Ne- no, that's a story <laughs> for another time. <laughs> Uh, And our final question again from Adam C. Which PWHL team are you worried about Minnesota facing in the postseason? Uh, Shout out to PWHL, which, and it's so funny because I guess I didn't consider it. First trade of the league being made, the Minnesota, or PWHL Minnesota and PWHL Boston making a trade yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, Just kind of fun and interesting and good to see, you know, again, them doing things like, of course they should be able to trade, right? They're a professional league. But to me, it just, it kind of took me aback. Like, oh, yeah, they can do this too. That's kind of nifty. So yeah. shout out to that. Love that. Um, for me, and again, it's been a hot minute since I've been able to see a PWHL game, um, but that'll change on Wednesday. The first, There's two teams that come to mind, and I think one has a little bit more edge of concern for me of them facing, and I would say that's New York. Um, they mm. just seem like a very – determined team and then the other team that comes to mind for me is Montreal um I just those are the first two teams I need to see more games like I had mentioned but those two teams for me when I last saw them last month face off against Minnesota just seemed like they didn't have any quit in them like they were kind of a relentless group that gave Minnesota a little bit of trouble I agree. Montreal comes to mind, but that's maybe because I've seen them play against Minnesota, right? And you could see kind of the struggle that that they had. Montreal currently number one in the standings with 17 points. They are have not through nine games. Um, They're three, three or three overtime wins, two overtime losses and a loss. Minnesota has 15 points with two overtime wins, two overtime losses and two losses. So very close. But the whole race in general, Kirsten, looks pretty tight. Boston and Toronto and New York are kind of all there in the middle. Ottawa down at the bottom. Um, But it is funny. I remember talking to Natalie Darowitz and I was like, oh, I can't wait for your parade. This was maybe after it was when they were still undefeated at the time. And she's like, it's a long season and it's going to be tough. And I was like, nah, but it is. I mean, it's the other teams are, are just as built um, as Minnesota, I think Minnesota's goaltending obviously gives it its edge, um, but it it is. It's going to be fun to watch, fun to see. I think Minnesota should be in the championship game anyway, but um, yeah, Montreal, I think, might be the toughest to overcome for them. Yeah, they just, they're a group that doesn't have quit in them. Mm-hmm. Love to see it. Yeah, original uh, six, baby. Postseason's going to be fun when that comes around. Whoop, whoop. See, we'll have a postseason here in Minnesota yet. Don't you guys fret. It'll be for your PWHL Minnesota squad. So it's always the ladies getting it done. I mean, who else if not us? Who else? if I'm really digging that NHL shirt, by the way. I keep like, staring at it. And I'm like, I really want that now. I'm all about the vintage look. 
Yeah, I, I like that a lot. Bravo. Job Thank well you. done. Thank you. Uh, let us know any other questions you guys might have. As always, let us know what you think of this week's episode. Anything we got right, anything we got wrong. Oh, one thing, one note Except I forgot to make. don't tell me I'm wrong because I'm never wrong. No, I did. I did do something this week and while I was playing hockey that I thought was quite hilarious and actually so did everybody else. I yelled out loud, I'm sorry, John Merrill, because I am <laughs> sorry because I got beat by a player and i was like i apparently i i feel i felt terrible criticizing any players after my performance on the ice this weekend clip it tag him <laughs> would you sorry, would you like john to give merrill. a formal would you like to take this moment as a, an opportunity for a formal apology for john merrill but no because i agree <laughs> with my my critic criticism right but at the same time i get it hockey's very hard and it's not for everybody <laughs> um but <laughs> That's not really an apology, is it? That's kind no, of like I the was opposite. Just about to say, maybe don't clip this. <laughs> there's still we'll time see. to turn it around, but there's also time for you to dig the hole even deeper. I know, but I did. I mean, it's again, hockey players, good for you. You guys are awesome. I, it's hard. It's a hard thing. I mean, granted, I'm not six years old, just learning how to do it. I'm 36, trying to learn how to do it, but it's a tough, tough game, tough gig. Do so, be yeah. tough. Be tough. Uh, tough to let you go, but we're going to let you go. As always, shout out to Soda Stick. Don't forget, Bar Down Beauties gets you 15% off all purchases. They release that cool Marc Andre Fleury t shirt and hat in collaboration with the Minnesota Wild. You can get that only at the Hockey Lodge. Be sure to go check that out. Uh, shout out to Livia. Shout out to Grain Belt, Royal Credit Union, Jim Beam, and Talk North. Uh, and shout out to you guys. You're the best. As always, have a great rest of your week. Go Wild! I was about to start singing again. I, I thought you might. I thought Say there was something you were holding back. Let me go. <laughs> Not even I on. I haven't stopped it. recording yet. So I know you haven't, but I. <laughs>